At the Edge, the podcast ministry of Edgewood Church, Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Here's another part of the message, Walk Worthy with Pastor Joel Coleman. ...connection with Jesus Christ, who is the head and the directing mind of the whole body. Sometimes these people use big words, so that's why I struggle. <laughs> but it's good, right? God is good. I thank Jesus every day for a earthly father who has undeniably and was been unshaken in his walk with Christ. My dad has taught me and my brothers from when we were young to follow Christ and my mom too, but she does a lot as well. They both are amazing. But seriously, this kind of love that is Christ's love, they have raised us to love that way. And it's, you know, and Pastor Mike, my dad, he loves you guys that way. Not only has he shown us how to love that way, but I see him day and night, night and day, praying for you guys, doing whatever he can for Christ. And it's, just, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's an inspiration, he, you know. So we need to be more Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And I'm like, I need to follow my dad. Is he, like, he follows Christ. <laughs> like, dad, keep pouring into me, you know? But he loves you guys so much. When we really let Christ live in our hearts and love each other the way we're called to love, we will grow and grow and grow and see Jesus move in our lives like never before. Christ must be the head, and we need to do this together. And finally, Ephesians 5-2, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offer and sacrifice to God. The same walk that Christ walked is the same way in which we ought to walk. Verse one, Ephesians 5 verse 1 says that we need to be imitators of God, therefore, as beloved children. In the same way, my kids, you know, imitate me. I think about Zeke. Zeke tries to do everything I do. He likes to dress like me and walk like me and eat what I eat. And whatever, whatever I'm doing, he wants to do. It's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> but that's what Jesus is saying. We need to imitate Christ that way. Everything that Christ does, we need to do. Imagine what would change in our lives if we did this. In the same way we're to imitate Christ, especially in love. Paul goes on to talk about wives and husbands and children and parents and servants and masters and the love that we are to have for each other. And the picture we have is Christ who willingly laid down his life for you and me while we were still sinners. While you, we were you know, beating him and spitting on him, making fun of him, nailing him to the cross, he died for you and me and that person. <laughs> wow, it's just unbelievable. When you think about the love he had for us, we need to have the same spirit in us and the same spirit who raised Christ from the dead to impact our lives on every level so that in every way, our lives will be different in the way we speak to our wives and husbands and our children do with their parents and you know servants and masters like bosses or whatever, else, however else you want to we as peers in the body of Christ are able to have the same kind of love. Jesus wants us to be one in body, one in the body of Christ. He urges us to be one and be united in Christ in love. Ephesians 4, 3 through 6 says, Eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's listen to this short clip by J.L. Packer. Christian unity is a matter that should be taken seriously because God takes it seriously. That's the short, short thesis that um, I put to you now. See, in, in the Bible, the Lord Jesus prays 
that all his disciples everywhere at all times will be one. One in their fellowship with him, one in their life together. And when the Apostle Paul writes about the church, he talks about there being unity of the Spirit as a given reality which embraces all Christians here and now. So church unity doesn't mean primarily or even essentially um, church union, though a lot of people make that mistake and think it does. Christian unity means acknowledging that we are all of us sharers in the love of the same Saviour and the power of the same Holy Spirit and the worship of the same Heavenly Father and being together in that brings us together as brothers and sisters in a single family so that all Christians straight away must see themselves as brothers, sister or sisters and friends to every other Christian in the world. One of the wonderful things that happens worldwide is the people of different race, different background, different culture, when they find that they are fellow Christians, embrace each other, are instant friends with each other, love and care for each other, and rejoice in being together. It's a glorious thing which is only known in the church. People think that life in the church is all dull. When one starts to experience Christian unity with fellow believers, one realizes just how false that is. Testing one. Amen. Worship team, you're doing good. <laughs> Our Christian unity is incredibly important. It's incredibly important uh, for a growth in our lives, in our church, in the kingdom of God. And, um, and Satan's going to do everything he can to bring dissension into that, isn't he? But we need to stand together and we need to walk in that manner worthy of the call to which we've been called. I'd like us to do something real quick. I know it's going to be a little funny, but hey, let's everyone stand up and hold hands across the aisle if you can and, or find someone you don't know and we're going to pray a prayer together. See, we're having fun now. This is, this is unity, you know? And, and when we're done this prayer, we're going to worship with the worship team. And if you want to come up, you can. If, uh, but, but God is good. Hey, and, and just a quick reminder, too, next week we are having a special service. Uh, and we're going to call a corporate fast. And I'm excited for that. We're going to have a couple different people speaking. It's going to be great. You don't want to miss it. And then we're going to go out in two weeks everywhere we can telling people about Jesus. But hey, let's pray. You guys can just repeat this after me. This is from St. Uh, Francis of Assisi. It's a prayer on unity. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant them that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. 
Jesus, I just thank you and praise you, God, for your word today. I just pray that you would fill us, Lord God, that we would be more like you. Christ, we, we just want you to fill us, fill our hearts. I pray, Lord God, that you would just be that bond, Lord God, in our church, and that you would, your peace would just flow. We need you today. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. the edge of darkness shining the light of truth please visit at the edge for more episodes and information